before he did Lethal Weapon, before he was Braveheart or The Patriot or anyone else in three big movies, Mel Gibson was this guy. And can you believe it's been 45 years since he made it as this character? Here's my review of Mad Max. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dual, better known to as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1979 Australian dystopian action flick Mad Max, released by Roadshow Film Distributors in Australia and by American International in the U.S. The film was directed by George Miller, produced by Byron Kennedy, and produced by Kennedy Miller Productions. Sorry, Mel Gibson as the titular character, Mad Max Rakatansky, a police officer turned vigilante in a near future Australia in the midst of societal, I mean societal co collapse. Excuse me if I'm mispronouncing it. Right, so I'm sorry. Joanne Samuel, Hugh Keith Burn. Steve Bisley, Tim Burns, and Roger Ward also appear in this. The film was released on this day, April 12, 1979. Henceforth, today is the film's 45th anniversary. And this film was so successful and has been credited for further opening the global market to Australian New Wave films and became the first in a series of films. So, let's get started. A near-future dystopian Australia is facing a breakdown of civil order, primarily due to widespread of oil shortages and ecocide. The berserk motorcycle, well, motorbike gang, well, they're so the same. Member Crawford Knight Rider Montaz Montezano kills a rookie officer of the poorly funded Main Force Patrol, the MFP. One of the last remaining law enforcement agencies escapes with his girlfriend in the dead officer's pursuit special. Knight Rider is able to elude the MFP until the organization's top pursuit man, Max Rokotansky, manages to steer him into a roadblock, resulting in a fiery crash that kills both Knight Rider and his girlfriend. At the MFP garage, Max is shown his new police car, a specially built V8 powered and supercharged Black Pursuit Special. A conversation between his superior, Captain Fred Fifi McAfee, and Police Commissioner L Labatuch, I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, reveals the Pursuit Special was authorized to bribe Max, who is becoming weary of police work into staying on the force. Night Rider's motorbike gang, which is led by Toad Cutter and Bubba Zane, run riot in a town, vandalizing properties, stealing fuel, and terrorizing the populace. A young couple attempts to escape, but the gang destroys their car and assaults them. Max and fellow officer Jim Goose Reigns arrest Toad Cutter's young protege, Johnny the Boy, at the scene. No witnesses appear in court, and Johnny is deemed mentally unfit to stand the trial. Against Goose's furious objections, Johnny is released into Bubba's custody. While Goose visits a nightclub in the sea that night, Johnny sabotages his police motorbike, causing it to lock up at high speed the next day and launch Goose off the road. Dazed but in uninjured, Goose borrows a, a ute to haul his bike back to MFP headquarters. On the way, Johnny throws a brake drum through his windshield and Goose crashes again. Toad Cutter urges and forces a reluctant Johnny to throw a match into the wreck of the Ute, burning Goose alive. After seeing Goose's charred body in the hospital ICU, Max informs Fifi that he is resigning from the MFP to save what is left of his sanity. Fifi convinces him to take some time off before committing to his decision. 
So Max goes on a trip in his panel van with his wife Jessie and infant son Sprawl, which that's Australian slang for a child. When they stop to fix the spare tire, Jesse takes Sprog to get ice cream and is molested by Toad Feather and his gang. She escapes and the family flees to a remote farm owned by an elderly friend, May Swayze. Now for the ending. And all that stuff. You've got five seconds to stop this video. Go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, please continue. Okay, you've been warned. The gang chases Jesse through the woods and captures Sprog while Max is off looking for them. May helps Jesse free the boy and the trio escapes in the van. But it soon breaks down. Jesse grabs Sprog and runs down the road until the gang catches up and runs them over. Sprog is killed instantly while comatose Jesse is brought to the ICU, where she is expected to succumb to her injuries. Driven into a rage by the loss of his family, Max dons his police uniform and takes the Black Pursuit Special without authorization to pursue and eliminate the gang. He kills several gang members before being caught in a trap set by Toad Cutter, Bubba, and Giant. Bubba shoots Max in the leg and drives over his arm before Max is able to shoot Bubba with a soft shotgun. Toad Cutter and Johnny right away and Max staggers to his car and chases Toad Cutter, whom he forces into the path of an approaching semi-truck. After a long search, Max finds Johnny stealing boots from a dead motorist. Ignoring Johnny's desperate pleas that he did not kill the man and he is not responsible for what happened to Max's family due to his diagnosed psychopathy. Psychopathy. Max handcuffs Johnny's ankle to the corpse's overturned vehicle and creates a crude time delay fuse using leaking petroleum and Johnny's liar. He gives Johnny a hacksaw, saying Johnny can either try to saw through the handcuffs which will take 10 minutes, or his ankle, which will take 5 minutes to survive. The vehicle explodes as Max drives away. End of story. So what did I think of Mad Max? Well, at first I thought I had seen this before, but I've only seen a few bits of it. In so this was the first time I've seen the film in its entirety. Because I do recall seeing one of the early Mad Max films, because... I did see the 2015 film Mad Max Fury Road, which you will get a review of that next month. I am going to review the sequels in order to promote the release of Mad Max the... Well, no, well it's not really a... Well, no, wait. Mad Max the Wasteland's still in the works. And why be, well, I'm, I'm getting all tongue-tied here. Um, just before um, the brand new spin-off film, Furiosa, a Mad Max saga gets released. There is a fourth film called Mad Max The Wasteland in the works. We don't know when it's coming out, though. But anyway, my thoughts on Mad Max was, I thought it was pretty darn awesome. It was pretty intense and what have you. I, I really not come to like him, what have you. No, it was kind of short, though. Just a ha an hour and a half plus three initial minutes for a total of 93 minutes. But anyway, yeah. Let's see. And... Oh, uh, now the score wasn't too bad, done by Brian May. No, not Brian May of of the main Queen. This is a different one, but not. He was an Australian film composer. He passed away in in April of ninety seven, and he was well known for composing the score for this. And same with its sequel, Mad Max Two, which would be better known to us as. Uh, the Road Warrior here in the U.S. Now, for our cast, Mel Gibson does an exceptionally good job as Max. He's very good. This was one of his early films in what have you. And I've got to say, I give him credit for what he had to do in this. Joanne Samuel plays Jesse. She was pretty, she was good. Hugh Keith's Byrne played Toe Cutter, a pretty good villain. C. Bisley plays Goose, pretty good. Tim Burns plays Johnny the Boy. Roger Ward as Fred Fifi McAfee. Not too bad. So anyway, they weren't too bad. I mean, everyone else in the film was really good too. So I gotta give this 
the cast credit and why it was just so incredible. The film did pretty well. It made a lot in Australia and over a hundred million worldwide the well in the US money. Given its small production budget between three hundred and fifty thousand to four hundred thousand in Australian money. Anyway, it was the most profitable film ever made at the time and held against this world record for the highest box office to budget ratio of any motion picture, given its small production budget, until the Blair Witch Project came out 20 years later. Upon its film was polarized by, well, it polarized critics. Well, in a review in 1979, and an Australian social commentator and film producer named Philip Ams condemned this film, saying that it had all the emotional uplifts of Mein Kampf and would be a special favorite of rapists, sadists, child murderers, and incestians, Mansons. After its U.S. release, the New York Times called it, called it the film ugly and incoherent. And Stephen King, writing for selling called it a turkey, but however, Variety Magazine praised the directorial debut by Miller himself. Yes, I give Mr. Um, George Miller credit for his direction. He did an exceptionally good job. The film currently sits at 91% on Ron Tamil saying staging the improbable car stunts and crashes to perfection, director George Miller succeeds completely in bringing the violent post-apocalyptic world of Mad Max to visceral life. Definitely. I definitely agree with that. And it has been included in the best 1,000 films of all time lists from the New York Times and The Guardian. Let's see. Yeah, it was it was also nominated for a lot of awards at the, for the um, Australian Film Institute Wing 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 for Best Editing, Best Original Musical Score, Best Sound, and Special and a Special Award for Sound Work. While Byron Kennedy was nominated for for the Best Film being a producer, and George Miller was nominated for Best Direction. They also got nominated for Best Point Actor for Hugh Keyes Byrne and Best Original Screenplay. So, I'm going to say that was pretty good. I'm going to say Mad Max proved to be pretty darn good and action packed in my view. I, uh, yeah, and I agree. The stunts were exceptionally awesome, too. This had more cool action sense that I could have well, had expected from this first film, so I feel bad that I never took the time to ever get to watch the film in its full mind-blowing entirety until now. Now, I can only recall seeing the third film, but that's been a long time ago. Now, I'm pretty sure I have yet to see the second film, but I'm going to watch it, though, however. And hope for the best this is as good as the, the this one, one of you. Mad Max, it's awesome. Mel Gibson's great. The cast isn't too bad. The score's pretty good. The stunts are awesome. And George Miller's direction was good. And the story wasn't too bad either. So overall, with everything said, would I recommend Mad Max? The answer is hell yeah. Go for it. This film's pretty cool. I think you'll really like it if you give it a try. So anyway... Now, of course, I will review the Mad Max sequels later on next month in order to promote the release of Furiosa. So anyway, if you like this, consider clicking the like button. And if you like this video, well, and please subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Please continue to help support my channel, continue to help it grow by subscribing and check out my great videos and what have you. So, if you like this, consider checking out my reviews for some of these other films. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of Lethal Weapon from 1987. The upper right-hand corner is my review of its sequel, Lethal Weapon 2 from 1989. Or you can check out my review of Lethal Weapon 3 in the bottom 
right hand, left hand corner, excuse me, I'm gonna mix up. I'm getting carried away by this, I apologize, this happens when you get old. And the bottom right hand corner, for realsies, is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya, and stay tuned for my Saturday morning TV log of Life Olympics coming out tomorrow. I almost forgot that. Okay, I'm really going to go this time. See ya again.